what we're going to try and show you now is what happens when those income differences get bigger within a society or when social stratification gets sort of steeper. And so the distances between people are greater. And what I'm going to show you first is what we're calling an index of health and social problems. And it's an index that we've made up of the problems, some of the problems we were talking about earlier. So it contains trust, life expectancy, infant mortality rates, obesity, mental health, children's educational performance, rates of violent crime, imprisonment, and I'm forgetting one, social mobility as well. Okay? So we've got 10 different things, and we have comparable data on these for 21 rich countries. And so here are the 21 rich countries, and we're showing this in relation to income differences. And at this end of the scale, these are countries that have small income differences, so they're more equal. And at that end, they have higher income differences. Up at this end in the USA, the richest 20% of the population have about eight, nine times as much income as the bottom 20%. And down here, it's about four, four times as much. So that's sort of the scale of the income differences. And you can see how close this relationship is, how close the correlation is between the degree to which a country has a high level of health and social problems or is doing better. And then in contrast, here's the same index. So it's the same things combined, the same health and social problems. So again, we have countries at the top who are doing badly, the USA, and countries at the bottom who are doing better, have fewer health and social problems. But now we're showing them in relation to national income per person. So it's a bit like before when we were looking at life expectancy and looking at happiness. We're on that flat part, that plateau, and there's no relationship at all between our index of health and social problems and national income per person. So if we put them in relation to income inequality, there's a strong, close relationship, and in relationship to national income per person, there's nothing. Now, you might just say, oh, well, we picked those countries to show what we want to show. So we've done the same thing in what we think of as an independent test bed, and we've created an index for the 50 states of the USA. And we've been able to include pretty much the same things. We didn't have social mobility for US states, but everything else we managed to get comparable data. So again, this is an index of health and obesity and educational performance, etc. So up here are states that are doing worse, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama. Down here we've got states doing much better, Utah, New Hampshire, Vermont, Iowa. And again, we're relating them to income inequality within each state. And a close, significant relationship between the two. More health and social problems in more unequal states. And here's the same index in relation to income per person. There's a slight trend here for fewer social problems in richer states, but that's, we think, probably because income within states is actually measuring how states are doing in relation to, to the nation as a whole. And the USA, of course, is a very unequal place and was doing badly on all these things. Now, just in case you think it's not just the choice of the places we look at that determines what we find, but it's the choice of the things we put in the index, we've done it again, but using somebody else's index. So here is the UNICEF index of child well-being. So that's an index that UNICEF came up with to see how well kids are doing in different countries, and it contains here 39 different factors about how children are doing. Do they get on with their parents? Do they get on with each other? How are they doing in school? So we didn't, we didn't choose the things that went into that one. But here it is in relation to income inequality. Countries at the top doing better on the index. Countries on the bottom doing worse. The UK doing worst of all. In relation to income inequality in these different countries. So again, a strong and close relationship. And if we put the same index once again in relation to national income per person in those countries, there's nothing. So again, we're on that sort of flat part of the plateau. So in two different test beds and with two different set, sorts of sets of problems, we're seeing the same consistent picture. No relationship with national income per person or income within states, 
but a strong relationship with income inequality. I want to take you through some of the individual components of that relationship now, sorry, of that index. So let's start with trust. Now, this is trust for US states. How many people in each state think other people can be trusted? So up here, you've got states where around 60% of the population think that you can trust other people. And down here, you've got states where people really don't trust other people. And the lowest of all is Mississippi, which is actually 16%. Only 16% of residents of Mississippi think that you can trust other people. And I think we all saw the consequences of that in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. And we saw exactly what it means to have a lack of trust among people. Here's mental health. Now, these data come from WHO surveys of mental health. So they're trying to do the same thing in every country. Um, some countries have got very low levels of mental health problems. These are adults who've been mentally ill within the past 12 months, had a mental health problem within the past 12 months. And it's below 10% in Japan and Germany and Spain. In the UK, 23% of us have been mentally ill within the past 12 months. And in the USA, it's one in four. So those are huge three, four-fold differences between countries at the bottom and countries at the top and a strong relationship with inequality. Not surprisingly, drug abuse shows the same pattern. So this is an index of use of different kinds of drugs, opiates, cocaine, cannabis, ecstasy, and amphetamines, and again, a relationship with inequality, with more unequal countries showing a higher prevalence of drug use. And I just want to sort of make an aside and tell you about an experiment with monkeys that sheds some light on this. So some experimenters and researchers took some monkeys and they raised them on their own. And when they'd sort of grown up and they were on their own, they put them into groups in cages and they waited to see which monkeys became the dominant monkeys and which monkeys became the subordinate monkeys. And they scanned their brains before and after. And the monkeys that became dominant when they scanned their brains, their brains lit up with all kinds of happy chemicals. So they sort of glowing and sparking on the neural scans. And the subordinate monkeys, their brains weren't, weren't buzzing alight with happy chemicals. 